we're just going to read one part of the Zohar that is extremely, extremely important to people not only to know, but also to, to understand and to apply. And uh, unfortunately, in certain things, when it comes to Torah and mitzvot, a lot of people, when it becomes a little bit personal or uh, rated R or something that the ear doesn't like to hear it, then no, 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 I don't want to hear this. So I can already tell you that what we're talking, we're going to talk about tonight will be, it will be rated R. And for the ears that don't like hearing that, then I, I, I'm, uh, then maybe shut down the video or get up and leave. But the Torah tells, the Torah will tell you directly what is good, what is not good, what is allowed and what is not allowed. We're going to be reading from the Zohar, page 90a, Daf Tzadik Amud Aleph. It's a new Ma'amar in Parashat Emor. The line starts with two patach ve'amar. 90, no, 90. 90 side A. Tzadik Amud Aleph. And we were talking about the entire beginning of the parasha, about the Kedushah of the Kohanim. But nevertheless, there is a verse in the Parashat Emor that it says as follows. Two patach ve'amar. Two, we are continuing what we left off before. So Rabbi Shimon was talking. When it says two patach, Two, not the number two. Two, it's in Aramaic. Two means also Rabbi Shimon. Talking about previously, we we're talking about Rabbi Shimon. So he also uh, uh, continued and he said, "What did Rabbi Shimon Amar? He wants to explain the verse that can be found in Parashat Emor. Ve'lo yechalel zaro be'amav ki ani Hashem mekadjo. If you're looking at the translation of the verse directly." It says, he shall not desecrate his offspring among his people. This is what the Torah says. Now the Zohar comes and takes it a little step forward. Zaro can be offspring, but Zaro is also his sperm. So the Zohar says as follows, because again, we're talking about the, the topic of about the purity of the Kohanim. And last week, when we talked about the beginning part of the parasha, we explained a couple times that it's not only referring to the Kohanim per se, rather we find in Parashat Itro, when the Kadosh Baruch orders Moshe Rabbeinu when he comes out of the mountain, what's the first thing that he tells us? You should be for me a nation of priests and a holy goy. So the Torah is also talking in an indirect way to all of us how we should keep our purity. Here it comes about something else that is extremely important to some extent that some great tzaddikim, they blame the entire exile on that specific act and say that if that act would be somewhat under control, then the redemption would come much faster. Needless to say that in our generation, the, anything that has to do with forbidden relations, what's called arayot, is completely out of control. Not that it's the, that the, we invented the wheel. Also, 4,000 years ago, there was issues. They just didn't have the internet. Now, we have much more access to immor immorality. Or what the Torah calls it, arayot. Arayot is any type of forbidden relations. Two weeks ago, we, we were in Parashat Achrei Kedoshim. And then again, we read in Achrei Mot. Uh, sorry, first we read in Achrei Mot. Then we read in Parashat Kedoshim. Twice we read about the severity and all the rules in forbidden relations. So here he comes and he talks about one thing. Again, Rabbi Shimon wants to explain a verse that can be found in Parashat Emor. Do not, he shall not desecrate his offspring among his nation because I am God who is making him holy. Rabbi Shimon comes and says, wait a minute, let's look at it in a little, little bit of a different way. He says, before he opens up and says as follows, Tachazi, come and see. Kol man de afik zera levatala. Any person that will take out what's called a zera levatala of his sperm, not for the sake of procreating. There's only one reason why Hashem gave us the ability to procreate. It's only to procreate and to bring kids into the world, not to do anything else with this entire system. This entire system is not a hobby. This system of procreating and a man and a woman is to be able to be fruitful and multiple. That's the only reason why. Any time a man will be with a woman or anything else, I don't want to get into too many details and descriptions, but any time a man will take from his sperm and put it in the wrong place, this is called zera levatala. Zera means sperm, levatala means for not for the right cause. What does he do when he does that? Mashpia koach lechitzoneim shitrabu. Usually what would you do when a husband and a wife are together? 
then they become multiple, they become fruitful. Now imagine now I'm getting my zera to the wrong side. What's the wrong side? It means chitzonim, we spoke about it last week. This is called the impure power, the impure power of impurity, or the external part of Kedusha, it's called chitzonim. And he gives this power to the chitzonim to now they should be fruitful and multiple. Instead of me, then I'm giving it to the other side of Kedusha. Therefore, lo apeshechinta. You know what happens to a person that does something like that? This is how severe the Zohar is. I know many people don't like hearing it. But a person that does such a thing will never get to marry to see the Shekhinah. The Shekhinah means the Shekhinah. Not the Shekhinah. The Shekhinah. Shekhinah is the feminine aspect of the divine. Uh, this is one of the greatest rewards a person can have, a soul, is to see the Shekhinah, to be able to see the, the Shekhinah. We spoke about it last week, that what happens when a person dies. Malach HaMavet comes, if you remember the whole thing we spoke about it, the angel of death. But the soul doesn't leave the body till it sees the Shekhinah. And once the soul sees the Shekhinah, then it's able to leave the body. But here it says, this is what Rabbi Shimon says. Now, I'm sure if you're following the teachings of the Zohar, you see that a lot of the times it's not Rabbi Shimon talking. Rabbi Yehuda, Patach Ve'amah, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Abba. And then we get every now and then Rabbi Shimon. Here Rabbi Shimon comes and says that. Rabbi Shimon, of course, we're talking about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. He says a person that does that, that Shopech Zera Levatala, gives his sperm to the wrong place, not only that he's strengthening the powers of impurity and making them fruitful multiple, rather, La Zache Lemechme Ape Shechinta. He will not merit to see the face of the Shechina. Ve'ikre Ra, and he's called evil. <coughs> Why is he called evil? If, uh, because the Samech Mem, the, the Satan, he's also called Ra. If you remember where we see the source to it in the Torah, is with the story with the sons of Yehuda. And Er and Onan, they uh, were married to Tamar, and they didn't want her to get pregnant, and they used to, what's called a Shchitet Azera, and uh, what Rashi says, Dash mi bifnim zorea mi uh, And nevertheless, the Kadosh Bukhu, Call them Ra, Ra be'ene Hashem, that does the evil in the eyes of Hashem. So the Zohar says also, that person is called Ra. Dichtiv, now he's quoting a verse from the book of Tehillim that will kind of bring up a question. There's a, in the uh, book of Tehillim, chapter eight, uh, 5, verse 5, there's a verse that goes as follows. Ki lo el chafetz resha'ata, lo yegurcha ra. We know that the Kadosh Baruch Hu is not evil. Kadosh Baruch is not looking for evil. So this verse in Tehillim, again, chapter 5, verse 5, it says, For you are not God that desires wickedness. Hashem is not looking for wickedness. But nevertheless, what does he say here on this verse? Because he's taking now the power, and this power of being fruitful and multiple, and giving it to the uh, uh, forces of impurity, to the powers that go against Kedusha. Why? So they will become multiple. Ve'amar, and he says, Hi, man de afik lebide, the person that does that. Now, again, I told you the class is going to be rated R. If it's not so soothing to your ear, I'm sorry. He says here it follows. Man de afik lide bide, what happens when a person does it with his hand? O, be'intu achara de lo chashra. Or he goes and puts the sperm in a woman that she's not kosher. Now, not that he has to eat her, but kosher means it's not his wife. Now, even if it's his wife, she has to be kosher. She has to be after being in the mikveh. Can come to your wife when she's in the time of her monthly cycle. Meaning, when he says kosher, the woman is kosher again. She doesn't need to eat her. Meaning that she's disqualified for him. Any woman in this world for me, is disqualified but one woman, my wife. Any other woman that I will go to, she's disqualified. She's not uh, uh, set for me, which means she's not kosher for me. Which means that a man that goes and puts sperm in a woman that has nothing to do with him right now, that this is again, zera levatala. So he says two options. First, you do it with your hand. Or then you put it in a woman that doesn't belong to, to you. I'm not talking about Hashem Rachem now when it goes into the same gender, or into animals and many other things. That's even, even ten times worse. But nevertheless, we're talking about two options here. V'yitema, what if you say, 
Hachinami. What happens if a person goes to his wife and she can't get pregnant? You know why? Because she's already pregnant. Is that considered Zera Levatala? No. That's not a problem. What about if a woman can get pregnant? For whatever reason. As long as it's a husband and wife, that there's no problem. Although there are many problems between husbands and wife, how they can chas v'shalom, chas v'shalom fail in zera levatala, even a very observant couple, that they follow all the rules, they can also fail with zera levatala. And again, zera levatala, zera means sperms, vatala means that it goes to the wrong place. So he asked, what happens if a woman already can get pregnant? I mean, I thought, now you're telling me the sperm is to get pregnant. What if she's already pregnant? No problem. If she's already pregnant, no problem. Now it's not only a woman who's pregnant. A woman who breastfeeds, usually it's very hard for her to get pregnant. So that's because of the hormones and how the body is producing the actual milk. So usually breastfeeding women, also it's very hard for them to get pregnant. And there are other situations how women cannot get pregnant. But nevertheless, if a husband and wife are doing it in a kosher way, no problem. So he says, la, no, so, no such a thing. Why? Because when they are together in Kedusha, Gam nishmatam, nishmatam mityachdot yachad, so their souls are united in a holy way. Val yedei zei gremu yichud b'shorsham. So they're causing a unity in their source, in the root of their soul. So that's a good thing. Now what happens there? Yolidu neshamot kedoshot. So they're able to birth holy souls instead of in bodies, but they still birth holy souls in the world above. I'm sure you notice once or twice a day, you say, Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Mecholam, Borei Nefashot Rabot. Yeah, I'm talking about the world above. Yeah, if a husband and wife now are together, and the woman cannot get pregnant, but they're doing it in a holy way, she's after the mikveh, it's done in the right manner and so forth, they might not bring uh, souls into the world, but they're creating holy souls in the world above. So, and I started saying about Borei Nefashot Rabot, the bracha that we say after eating almost everything, What's Borei Nefashot Rabot? Creating many souls. Who's creating many souls? I also create many souls. By the way, I just the question is where do I put these souls? Do I put them in a body? Do I put them in a holy body? If you remember last week we talked about when the body dies. And if you remember, we talked about four reasons why we're not allowed to leave a dead corpse on the, on the, uh, and not buried. And one of them is because the soul needs to constantly be in a body, either in a physical body or in a spiritual body. And as long as the first body, the physical body, is not buried, then the soul cannot get a spiritual body. So even when I create souls in the world above, they need to go into holy spiritual bodies. Nevertheless, and that can be done when the husband and wife are doing it in a kosher manner. Kosher, I mean that she, a woman is after uh, uh, being in a mikveh, that she's not during her cycle, and it's done in the right way. Now is not the time to start explaining every little thing, but if, uh, the right way is exactly how it sounds. Nevertheless, he continues and he says, Ela kama de Amran, as we have said, and as it's, we said before, for a man that is uh, taking out sperm either with his hand or with a woman that doesn't uh, belong to him. Now what happens? He says, And for this, a man has to ask from the Kadosh Baruch that he should find himself, what's called, here it says, mana de kashra, a, a vessel that is kosher. What does it mean, a very vessel that is kosher? A wife that is, a, is a, a, the word that he's using is hogenet, a kosher wife. A wife that wants to keep family purity and to follow the rules and so forth. De la yaf gimzare, so he's not going to now chas uh, v'shalom, destroy his uh, sperm. Ki, because man de afik zara be mana de la kashra, because if a person takes now his sperm and puts it in a woman that is not kosher, pa gim le zare, he's now damaging his sperm. Vai le man de fagim zare, oh, that poor person that does damage into his, uh, into his sperm. This is called zera kodesh, doesn't even belong to you. It's now, Shem is giving you power to bring life to the world and you're now desecrating it. Now, what about other people? What about other people that I said, I'm saying it now, the Zohar is saying it now in a nice way, other people. But of course, it's also the t talking about when a man is with a man. This is a severe sin. And I know it sounds disgusting. Some people do it also with animals. So he says here, What about other people? What happens with them? 
בחנא דקאה המלטתא בקגוונא דלעילה, בקודשא עילה. So much more so, when, uh, when a person who is a Kohen that does something like that. Al achad kama vekama. When a person uh, 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 damages the sperm, like what we said in the beginning, that's bad. Very bad. But when it's with another person, this is in al achad kama vekama. Al achad kama vekama means so much more so. It becomes even worse than that. I don't know if we're going to get to, to this today, but uh, we learned last week that uh, uh, Bilam, how did he was able to do all this sorcery and magic? Because he had, I know it's going to sound disgusting, we learned that last week, he had a donkey. And Bilam used to be with his donkey and put his sperm in the donkey and it was so, such power of impurity that it was able to take him to the deepest, highest levels of of places of impurity, that he was able to perform acts of magic and sorcery, and that's one way how he used to do it. I know it sounds disgusting, but nevertheless, there's some other disgusting things, but believe it or not, there's some disgusting people in this world. But nevertheless, comes and tells you how severe it is. Now, if you remember, we were talking about the verse... You should not desecrate your uh, sperm Be'amav In his nation What does that mean in his nation? When it says the word Be'amav in his nation He's asking What are you coming to tell me Be'amav In his nation As it says before what we said What are we learning? If you remember look in the text What it says that a coin is not allowed to go To be married To get married to a widow not to a divorcee, not to a, a halala, a person who is a, a, a chas v'shalom, lost her, her husband, one or another, or zona, a woman who's a, a been with another man and not in a, in a, how do you call it, in the brit nisuim, not in marriage. Now a lot of people are koanim, it's hard for them to find uh, uh, their other half, because they can marry the divorcee, they can marry the widow, and they can marry a woman who's been with somebody already. So, this is what the Torah says about the Kohanim. Uchtiv, what else does it say? After that, velo yechalel zaro be'amav, then he's not going to desecrate his sperm in his nation. Bahem ibaile, meaning, what is it trying to say? Ma'u be'amav, what does it mean in his nation? El amila da kalana be'amav. Right? This is talking about if the Kohen Gadol takes a woman that is disqualified for him, that he's making a disgrace for the entire nation. Pegimu be'amav, he made a disgrace, a blemish for the entire nation. Ki bezeu pogem ba'shchina, because he's making a blemish in the shchina, in the feminine aspect of the divine. And then it's affecting the entire nation. Ve'aldaktiv, and for that it says, ki im betula me'amav ikachisha, so the Kohen has to take a virgin from his nation. As it says, it has to be from his nation, not from any other uh, uh, nation. And here it's also referring to it has to be from a family of Kohanim. And by that, he's able to do a tikkun, a rectification to the Shekhinah, and that affects the entire nation of Israel. Everything uh, uh, referring to the Shekhinah above. Ma'od. What does it says also about the Kohen? I am Hashem making him sacred and holy. Rabbi Shimon asks, What does it mean that the Kadosh Baruch makes us holy? And why is it saying it in the past tense? If it's in the future, it says in the past. It says here, I am the ones who bring in Hashem, when it says I am, means on Hashem. I am the one who's uh, every day uh, dwelling my Shekhinah on you, meaning I'm making you holy. And for that, one should not uh, uh, blemish his sperm. Why? Kadosh Bokhu is making us holy, he's dwelling his Shekhinah on us, and then you go and you do all sorts of acts that are not appropriate. So Shem says, I am, I, I am making you holy. Don't make, don't uh, uh, make a blemish in your, in, in your Kedusha. 
כי אין אני שורה במקום פרגום, you know why? Because the Kadosh Baruch says I can't dwell in a place of impurity, or a place that has a blemish. So why would you want to make a blemish? Don't you want Hashem to dwell on you? The Shechina, of course. Deha, saying, אני Hashem מקדשו. I am Hashem making you holy. Always. דענה בעינה לקד שלה. Because I want to make you holy and sanctify you. How? By putting the Shechina on you. השראת השכינה. The Shechina dwells on you. וישתקח קדישה בכולה. In order that we should be Kedushim. That we should be hell, uh, uh, holy. In everything that we do. The Kedusha ishtamesh al yada the Kedusha. The Kedush Baruch Hu uses you for things of Kedusha. So the Kedush Baruch Hu wants you to become holy. Why? Because he can use you for things that are Kedusha. It's talking constantly about Kohanim. But don't mistake in here that it's not necessarily referring only to the Kohen. Kohen, what is a Kohen? A Kohen is a man that serves God 24-7. His life is devoted to Hashem. That's a Kohen. They used to work in Bet HaMikdash. They didn't get a paycheck. They didn't get a, a property in the land. They didn't get anything. They served Hashem from morning to night. The Kadosh Baruch Hu worried for them about food and tuition and whatever they needed. And that's it. Tuition for the kids. Of course, that's my additions. That's my jokes. But the Kadosh Baruch Hu worried about the Konim. They didn't get anything. So we are also nations of priests. So the Kadosh Baruch Hu says, you are here to serve me. You're not here to do anything else. You need to serve me. You can only be doing that when you're holy. If you are making yourself unholy, then it means I can't use you. I can't even bestow my Kedusha on you. So what are you doing here? You're messing up the whole system. Therefore, the Kedosh Baruch says, I am the, uh, Hashem that will sanctify you, that will make you holy. You do a damage specifically there, then you become very unholy. And of course, it continues and goes. I, I wanted to read more. I think we'll just re uh, leave that already for tomorrow. That's uh, also very important to know. But the thing is that I know sometimes it's not so uh, uh, soothing to the ear to hear it and definitely doesn't sound appropriate and like I said before, rated R and all this. But the fact is, you can't ignore the reality. That's the problem with many people in our generation. They're ignoring the reality. Why are you ignoring the reality? Wouldn't you want to be educated in the right way? Don't you want to know how to keep the Kedusha? Now you see that in our generation, the impurity, the immorality, the what's called pritzut, how it's all over the place, that's really damaging any type of Kedusha in the world, removing any type of holiness from the world. How is Hashem going to bestow His Kedusha on the world when there's so much acts of immorality? So not that you can do something, you cannot not go now and change the entire world. You cannot go now and somehow dismantle the internet. But at least you can bring the Kedusha on yourself. And if you can't affect it to other people, then at least you have to be living in Kedusha. The majority of most people's problems is coming specifically from the Brit. Now we're learning a lot about Sfirat HaOmer. Sfirat HaOmer, we're specifically going through the seven Sfirot, what's called Zayn Tachtonot, the seven that are below. Chesed Bevorat Yiferet Netzach Hod Yesod Malchut. We explained numerous times that the Sfirah of Yesod, the Yesod is the foundation. And when the Patach Eliyahu explains about the structure of the Sfirot, then Chesed is Yad Yamin, right hand, Gvura is left hand, Tiferet is the body, Netzach is the right leg, Hod is the left leg, and Yesod is the, where the organ of the man is for the woman, is the womb. That's the Yesod. This is the foundation of everything. Shake now the foundation, everything will crumble and fall. So look at the Yosef at Tzadik. Why is he called Tzadik? You know, many other people got titles. Avraham got Avinu, our father. Moshe got our teacher, Rabbeinu. Shmuel Hanavi, the prophet. David HaMelech, and so forth. And Yosef got HaTzadik. Why Tzadik? He was able to hold his breath. He was the only one that was able in history to stand like an iron and say, no, I'm not desecrating the breath. I'm not going to desecrate this, this covenant. Why? Because that's the power of the foundation. And because of that, he was able to become a king, to become the, the mashbil, the giver. And up until today, our symbol of a tzaddik is Yosef a tzaddik, because he was able to guard the Brit. And he's the tzaddik, he's the Yesod Olam. What is the tzaddik called? The foundation of the world, the Yesod Olam. You shake the foundation, maybe we should do some more classes about Kabbalistically what it means, but when I break the foundation, all the shefa, all the abundance that comes to me, if you're looking at it by the structure of the Sfirot, the shefa is coming from the mochin, from the intellect. From Chochmah, Bina, and Dad, but it will trickle into the Sfirot, will go through the Sfirot and all fall down into the basin, so to say, which is Yesod. That's where it gets all the Shefa. 
If it's intact, then it will give it over to the Malchut. If not, then all the Shefa goes, all the Shefa is an amendment, goes to the Chitzonim, to the Klipot. Now I'm in a place that all my Shefa goes to the wrong place. And then what people don't understand why there's all sorts of problems in many different, many different departments. It's because that department is being damaged. And then, of course, this is now talking about when the husband, a man and woman are not uh, married, but also a married couple can chas v'shalom fail in zera levatala. And there's many ways to, to do that. And one should be educated and to know. So I know many people don't like hearing it. Many people say, I don't want you to talk about this. I don't want to hear things. Yeah, but you can't ignore the reality. If this was something minor, <laughs> fine. But this is not something minor. This is something big. This is something important. And it's a source of a lot of problems for many people. Nevertheless, somehow it's bringing so much impurity on, on, uh, on the, into the world and onto the person himself. And I know many people are pointing the finger, okay, this is a problem for men. It's not only a problem for men, you know, it's also women are, it takes two to tango, by the way. So women also have a big responsibility here, how they're also controlling this entire department. Also women, I mean, even though men are the ones who's holding it, but women also are partners here and women also can have partnership in something like that. But nevertheless, what we want to take from that is not to put per, per, per anyone on the spot or to embarrass anybody. But nevertheless, needless to say that it's not appropriate for, for uh, minors to hear or to the, not the right people, but everybody needs to hear it. And if you don't like hearing it, as the Torah says, that's your problem. You still need to hear it because you need to know what to do and what not to do. And this is one of the most severest sins that a person can do in the Torah. We spoke about it before about the rules of the game from the Torah. This is one of the most severest sins that a person can do. And that's why we see that the most kedusha is specifically when a man and a woman are together. This is the highest point of holiness of kedusha that we can reach. With that said, we're going to continue a little bit more tomorrow. And hopefully this gives some uh, thought, material to thought, to, uh, to think about and to understand that we have to be holy and we are a holy nation. And the Kadosh Buhu has high expectations from us. And in those high expectations, when we are desecrating it and we're blemishing it, then chaz v'shalom, the Kadosh Baruch Hu doesn't bestow his kedusha on us. And this is a, a, big, a, big, a, a big problem that we don't want to lack and to miss chaz v'shalom. As other Shem, Shem should help us to constantly be in the level of kedusha, of complete kedusha, of holiness. That's when the shechina can bestow on us. That's when we can elevate ourselves to a much higher level. And needless to say, uh, hasten the Geula in a much faster way because this is one of the biggest things that is pushing the, the redemption of coming in a nice, smooth way. Don't forget, look at the history, how many times Hashem, as it says, had it up to here. Look with Sdom ve Amora. Hashem destroyed Sdom. Why? He couldn't take it anymore. Sdom was like a Las Vegas or whatever. I don't know how to call it. Sin City. Sdom ve Amora was only about immorality and behavior like that. The Kadosh Buhu at some point, as it says, had enough and then he destroyed it. Same way that the Kadosh Buhu destroyed the world in the, in the flood. Even though Rashi says they were stealing from each other, but nevertheless, what was going on before the flood, uh, it's, um, our, our commentary says that even the animals used to go to the wrong gender and to the wrong uh, uh, species. And only the animals that stuck with their own species are the only ones who came into the Teva, into the Ark. Which means there were many other species that didn't came, make it into the Teva, into the Ark. Why? Because they went on different species. So nevertheless, you see sometimes the Kadosh Baruch Hu says, I had it up to here with this immorality. And then he destroys a city or destroys a nation or destroys a country. And uh, you can look with your own physical eyes sometimes where these natural disasters fall. Sometimes a natural disaster comes, 50,000 people die, half a country is underwater, tsunami, earthquakes. Why? The Kadosh Buhu is already it's reaching him to over here how much he can tolerate with what's going on. So we have to take that also in the right account. And needless to say, the point is just to make sure that we're constantly in a state of Kedusha. It's constantly talking about Kohanim because Kohanim had to keep their level of Kedusha constantly. If they were called now to Bet HaMikdash, they have to be ready and prepared for for, uh, to, for the service. So we are also a Kohanim of the Kadosh Baruch Hu. We're here to serve Hashem 24-7. I'm not here for doing anything else. I'm here only to serve my master. So Bezad Hashem, Hashem should help us to be Kedushim, to be holy, 
and to be able to serve him constantly in the best possible way.